Ron, put down the camera. So welcome to our final methodology for the course, solving a system of two linear ODEs, a homogeneous constant coefficient. So we're going to start off with the M written in equation form. In our example, we have y1 prime equals negative 7y1 plus 4y2, and y2 prime equals negative 6y1 plus 7y2. And we're going to write the system as a matrix equation. So we've seen how to do this in a previous methodology except we don't have that f of t vector there getting in the way, so it would be a simplified y prime equals a y matrix equation. So those equations in matrix form look like that. Now there's a lot of why questions that come up when we take this next approach. Um, so I refer you to the critical thinking questions to answer most of those and just post in the discussion forum if you still have questions. But uh, we're now going to set up a matrix related to A the matrix A here, negative 7, 4, negative 6, 7. Um, and that's going to be to find the eigenvalues of A. So the matrix was A minus lambda I, where I is the identity matrix. So we take the matrix A. subtract lambda times the identity matrix. And the identity matrix has ones along the diagonal and zeros on the off diagonal. So we would get this. Hopefully you know how to deal with a uh, constant or a scalar times a matrix, right? You just multiply each component in the matrix by that scalar. So lambda times the identity, we we'll just put lambdas in the diagonal. The zeros would still be zero. And hopefully you know how to add and subtract matrices. You do that again component-wise. So we just um, subtract the first two components and subtract the second two and so on and so forth. So we can obviously write this as one matrix uh, where it looks a lot like A except we're subtracting lambda in the diagonals. matrix A minus 
lambda i. There it is. Right. Now lambdas are the eigenvalues, and to find them we're going to set the determinant of this matrix equal to zero. And this will give us what's called the characteristic equation. So for a two by two matrix, finding the determinant is a matter of finding the product of the diagonal terms and subtracting the product of the off diagonal terms. So we would have negative seven minus lambda times seven minus lambda minus four times negative six. And we're setting that equal to zero. This is the characteristic equation for this matrix. This one up being a quadratic equation for lambda, which may have two solutions, one solution, or complex conjugate solutions. Uh, for the case of a repeated root, you can look at the next example. Here we should get two real roots. If we positive. distribute this out, what are we going to get? Positive negative 5, or less, we well, get lambda minus 25. Lambda squared minus 25. Yeah? Let's see, negative 49 plus lambda squared. plus 24. So we do get lambda squared minus 25 equals 0, so lambda squared equals 25. So the two solutions are <coughs> lambda 1 equal to negative 5, and lambda 2 equal to 5. So these are two eigenvalues and we would like to then find the corresponding eigenvectors. So in the, in the previous example we had one lambda, the value for lambda was just one value positive. You know, so we only had one eigenvector but in this case we have two different values for lambda so we're going to have two eigenvectors. Right, in general each eigenvalue will have an eigenvector, and so we do need two eigenvectors to get the general solution. And so you have to do a little something extra to get that second eigenvector in the case where you would just have one solution to this equation. And that, that's covered in the other example. Now, we're going to use this same relationship we had for eigenvalues to find the eigenvector. Uh, but actually going to use these specific numbers, negative 5 and 5. We're going to do this one at a time. So let's see how this would work. So if we have lambda equal to negative 5, this is actually just a plus 5 times the identity. And then x will be the, or so we'll let u be the eigenvector. That's how it's written here. So u will be the eigenvector associated with lambda 1. All right, so let's write out that matrix equation can actually take this one and this one. It's pretty similar.
So putting in uh, negative 5, right, we would actually be subtracting negative 5, so we'd be adding 5 to the diagonals, uh, which would give us what, negative 2 and 12. Uh, don't forget, this is just a system of linear equations in terms of u1 and u2. So writing those out, we'll see that they, in fact, represent the same equation. One will be multiple of the other. And so we won't really solve this for a single solution for u1 and u2. Rather, we'll solve for all the eigenvectors that are parallel along a given line. So you can take either equation, because it'll give you the same answer, and you can think of u1 as being x and u2 as being y, or vice versa, and sort of set up a... Uh, an equation for this, and then from that we'll get whatever vector seems most convenient. I'm going to grab the top equation, and uh, I'm going to solve for... If you want to think of uh, u1 as x and u2 as y, so I'm going to solve for u2. So that would put 2u1 on the other side. And then dividing both sides by 4. Get u2 equals 1 half u1. And so if you like, you can think about this as the line y equals 1 half x. Any vector along that line would actually work. Obviously, we prefer whole numbers. You can. Uh, so what's a nice vector u that would have that property? So I think we want the vector 2, 1. So the vector 2, 1 will be along that line. Again, remember that first component is x and the second is y, and so that will go uh, right 2, up 1, and it will be along that line. Uh, but any, any scalar multiple of u is also a vector. Uh, it's just this is one that has the smallest positive numbers that are whole numbers. So if you go smaller, you'd have fractions. Uh, if you go bigger, then you could produce it. So we just want to repeat the same process with the other eigenvalue of 5 and get the other eigenvector, vector which we're calling b. And then we'll throw it all together. So uh, it saves some time. I can do some copying and pasting here. Lambda 2 is positive 5. And so that would actually be a minus 5, right? Because it's a minus lambda. And so we'd be subtracting 5 from the diagonal entries. Are we finding the v or, or? Oh, yeah. <laughs> good point. We are finding v, not u. Very good. So let's adjust everything to make it actually match up doing and you might have said well why didn't we just you know instead of u and v call these eigenvectors x1 and x2 
um, because you'll notice that we then go to components and so we need the one and two to talk about the components of the vector so we can't already have subscripts on the vectors themselves so we need different letters so that's why we're using u and v they say well could we use x and y obviously y has been taken so as, as crazy as all this seems it, it still is probably the best notation all right, now what happens if we do that subtraction? So it is going to give us 12 and 2, but in different places than before. Negative 12 in the top left, 2 in the bottom right. And so these equations are similar but different. Again, they're multiples of each other, right? The top equation is twice the bottom one. So you could take either equation. Uh, just for fun, let's take the second equation this time. And again, it's solve for V2. So we would have this 6V1 put on the other side. And then we would divide by 2. And you can think about this as being the line y equals 3x. So what is a nice vector that's kind of small that's along this line? How about... And so the vector 1, 3 um, will actually have a horizontal component of 1 and a vertical component of 3, so it'll have that slope of 3 that we wanted. All right, so you obviously see the relationship now between the slope and these components. Right, so the slope is a fraction, uh, sort of gets flipped upside down, and as uh, the first component in the vector is the denominator, and the second component is the numerator. So for 3, it's 3 over 1, which goes to 1, 3. So putting these together is now just a matter of setting up this vector equation. We still don't know what C1 and C2 are. We'll find those after we put this in. We can put in uh, lambda 1 is negative 5, and lambda 2 is 5. And this isn't really going to work because we'll do the matrix. And we talked about how to check the solution um, in a previous methodology. But yeah, we still need to find C1 and C2. Um, so we use the initial conditions. And those are given at the beginning of the problem. Right here.
So it's basically letting t equal to zero, which will make these exponentials go away. <coughs> and it'll actually just set up a nice vector equation. And you might want to work with the non-vector version of this. This is pretty straightforward, right? Yeah, I guess we would. So let's now write this out as a system so we can actually figure out what C1 and C2 are. So 2 equals 2C1 plus C2. Negative 4 equals C1 plus 3C2. All right, so solving this, um, could use a substitution method, addition method, or technology. So we'll just do substitution method here. I'm going to take the second equation and solve for C1. So I would get C1 equals negative 4 minus 3c2 and then I'm going to substitute that into the first equation <coughs> and I get an equation for c2 Right, negative 8, negative 6. Um, and we can add the 8 to both sides to get 10 over there, and then negative 6 and 1 is negative 5. So 10 equals negative 5, 2, which tells you C2 is negative 2. And C1, we have in terms of C2, so negative 3, negative 2 is 6, negative 4, positive 6 is 2. So let's state the solution here. C1 and C2 written out, right? C1 is 2. And C2 is negative 2. And that's the solution. And I guess you can bring the C1 and C2 into those vectors now if you want. That makes it look cleaner. You can make this 4, 2. And then uh, the negative 2. Well, let's keep the minus out there. 2 and 6. Right? You could also write it like that. And that's solving a system of two linear ODEs that are homogeneous with constant coefficients.